Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a 667B electric circuits practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, it really helps our channel when you leave a like and subscribe to it. Um, so let's just go ahead and figure out what we have to solve, shall we? So this is the circuit that we are going to be working with. Uh, it is a partially connected circuit and uh, we don't know the uh, value of R4 and points 1 and 2 are disconnected. So the f we have to basically answer three things. Uh, we have to find the equivalent resistance, we have to calculate the current through the battery and each resistor, and then we have to actually connect points 1 and 2 together and figure out what changes on our circuit. So as you can see, I have uh, you know a picture of a circuit over here. I have my values, so let's just go ahead and get started. So obviously, the first thing that you want to figure out is um, how is this affecting the circuit? Well, um, you know, by this point, uh, as you've seen some videos, I think that um, it should be very clear that if you don't have a current passing through a resistor or a light bulb, then that means that that resistor or light bulb is not energized, um, which basically means that nothing is happening to it, which basically means that you know it's not relevant to the circuit. Just You can just cut it out since you really have no energy, uh, aka you really have no charge crossing through this loop, it's disconnected. So if you have this thing disconnected, you can really think about this circuit as just uh, these three resistors, one, two, and three. And as you can see, I don't even bother copying this because there's nothing happening over here, so it really doesn't affect anything. So really what I'm working with, at least for parts one and two, is this circuit over here. So uh, we need to figure out what the current is through the battery and through each resistor. So let's just see how the currents are splitting up. So we basically have three currents over here in our system. So we have a total current, which by definition is the current that is crossing the battery. And then once the current hits this junction over here, uh, it's basically going to split up. A chunk of the current is gonna flow like this and I'm gonna call this I1 because it crosses R1. And another chunk of the current crosses these two resistors and I'm just gonna call it I2. Now, uh, my junction rule or my continuity equation over here at the junction says that what goes in needs to go out just as with the pipes continuity, right? So that means that my incoming current, which is the total one, has to be equal to the two currents that are getting out of the junction. And basically we have to figure them out because that's the exercise. That's what we are being asked to do. So how are we going to find them? Well, I think that the easiest way to solve this, uh, to solve for this would be to actually use loops. Uh, I definitely think that this is the way to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two loops. So first I'm going to do a green loop and my loop, I'm going to start over here and I'm going to do this loop like this. So from this loop, uh, first the first thing that I'm crossing is a battery, so 18 volts. And then I loop around and then the next thing that I'm crossing over here is this resistor, right? So this is negative IR. So this is the current that I'm trying to find and the resistor value was actually given to me. So I'm just going to substitute. So this is negative IR. And this is equal to zero because once I get to this point, I'm back where I started. So this is equal to zero. 
So this is my first loop and from this loop I know that my current one, which is this green one over here, has to be equal to 18 divided by 6. So this means that I1 is equal to 3 amps. Final answer. Now I can basically go ahead and do the exact same thing for the other loop. So let me just pick a different color. So let's just go ahead and, I don't, all right, so let's just go ahead and pick orange over here. So now I'm gonna start over here, same place, but I'm gonna loop around these two resistors over here. So now I'm doing an outer loop. Why? Well, because I already have I1. So now if I wanna find what I'm calling I2, then I need to loop in a way in which I'm actually encountering this current, otherwise it's not gonna show up. So if I use this loop, the first thing that I'm crossing is a battery, so again, plus 18, and then I'm going all the way over, and then I'm skipping this junction, I'm just crossing out, and then I'm actually hitting these two resistors. So this resistor is negative IR, so this is negative I2, R2, which is 2. And then I'm also crossing this resistor, which is the same current, but this resistor is equal to 1. And then I go all the way over here, and then I, uh, I finish my loop. So because this is a full loop, this is equal to 0. So now uh, I can solve for I2. So I2 is equal to uh, 18 divided by 6. Um, no, divided by 3, I'm sorry. 18 divided by 3. So this means that I2 is equal to 6 amperes. There we go, final answer. And now finding the total current is actually very easy because I said that, you know, these two recombine into the total current. So the total current is just equal to uh, 6 plus 3, so that is equal to 9 amps final answer. So now we just need to be a little bit careful because uh, the instructions said uh, what is the current through the battery and each resistor. So I calculated three currents, but if I were grading this quiz, then I wouldn't know. Well, obviously I drew them here, but let's just be very specific. So this is, um, so battery is the total current. So this is nine amps. And then R1 is I1, so is 3 amps. And then R2 and R3 is I2, so it's equal to 6 each. So final answer. Now the other thing that we have to figure out is what is the equivalent resistance of this circuit. So we have to take the circuit and basically reduce it in order to figure out what the equivalent resistance is. Um, so this is a three resistor circuit. So we have R1, 2, and 3. Now if I want to reduce this circuit, then the first thing that I can do is combine these two in series. So let me just go ahead and do that. So this guy I'm not really doing anything to. And then this is the series combination of R2 and R3. Now whenever I'm combining resistors in series, what I have to do is just add them up. R series is just R1. Well, in this case, R2 plus R3 because it's two and three. So these resistors in series are equal to uh, 3 ohms. And then I need to combine these 3 ohms with this uh, 6 ohm resistor 
and uh, they are now in parallel because they have the same delta V but the current splits up so they are in parallel so my equivalent resistor is equal to these two in parallel so is equal to uh, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 inverse of that so my final answer is, um, let's see, two. Final answer is equal to two ohms. So now we have a final answer for part A and part B. And now we basically have to figure out part uh, C. So let's just go ahead and read it. So part C of this problem says, uh, now suppose that points one and two are actually connected by a wire. So for part C, we're actually connecting this. For each current calculated in question two, state whether the current increases, decreases, or stays the same. Okay, so now we have a wire over here and now obviously uh, this energizes this, this branch, right? So now we actually have three branches on our uh, circuit instead of just being able to say, well, oh, this goes away. So now uh, I need to apply continuity again. Um, I have a total current that's crossing my circuit. So let me just redraw it. And then this I1 is still gonna go down over here. Uh, we also have another I2 that goes down over here. But now we actually have a new current that is showing up, which is this current over here. So obviously before we didn't have any current and now we have some current, so let me just uh, give myself some more space to write stuff down. Let's do it over here. Um, so for R4, uh, we actually have an increase in current. And this is kind of obvious because before uh, we used to have no current and now we have some current. So regardless of what value this is, uh, R4 obviously experienced an increase. So that is a, an easy final answer for I4. Now, um, our new continuity equation, so like our new continuity equation, instead of just having I total be equal to two currents, now I total is going to be equal to three currents over here. So it's going to be equal to I1 plus I2, and I guess I'm calling this I3 like this. So it used to be that this current just split up in two, but now it's actually splitting up in three. Now I need to figure out the new values for I1 and I2. And this is where just stopping for one second is actually going to save you a lot of time because when you, uh, so first of all, what you can do is just repeat your loops. Like that is gonna give you a final answer and that is gonna work because whenever you're looping around, uh, you're conserving energy. So that is like a sure way of getting somewhere. But I mean, we can just see what would happen if I loop around, you know, this first loop, which is the equivalent of this first loop. Well, when you look at them, say what happens when I loop around? Well, I have 18 volts and then I'm crossing this resistor only. And then this value is also exactly the same, six. And then I looped around. So it doesn't matter if I added a new branch. If I do an inner loop, I'm gonna get this exact same equation, which means that I1 is going to be literally the exact same number. Because this internal loop is exactly the same. So for R1, same current because I1 didn't really change at all. I1 stays the same. Now what happens if I loop around 
like this. Well, um, you're gonna get this exact same equation because uh, you're gonna encounter 18 volts and then you're gonna get over here and then you're gonna do I2 times two because it's two. Then you're gonna do I2 times one because it's equal to one. Then it's going to be equal to zero and then you're gonna solve for I2 and then you're gonna see that literally nothing changed. So I2 is still the same which means that for uh, R2 and 3 you also have the same current but then what happens to the current uh, that is crossing the battery? well you have uh, two currents that stay exactly the same and then you have one current that was zero and now it's some number so if it went from zero to something, that means that it increased. So this basically means that your total current increased, right? So this means that the uh, current, um, is it T, uh, how do you write this? T H R O U G H. This means that uh, this current is actually increasing and that will be the final answer to the current crossing the battery and it is just basically that because these two stay the same and this one shows up then that means that this one has to be higher another way to look at it is uh, if you reduce both of these circuits you're gonna see that your equivalent resistance actually uh, if you go from here to here your equivalent resistance actually goes down so feel free to try to work it out this way. If you have them both, um, you'll see that it actually goes down, which means that if your equivalent resistance goes down, that means that your total current goes up. And because uh, by loop rules, these two have to stay the same, then this means that I3 shows up. So there are definitely uh, at least those two ways that I can come up with in order to figure out what happens to the currents. But obviously, I definitely think that if you have to choose between reducing two whole circuits in order to compare them or just realize like, hey, the loops will be exactly the same. So I really don't have to do any extra, you know, math, any extra calculations. I can just recycle my loops. Obviously, I think that the most clever way to figure this out is to just take a second to realize what would happen if you use the exact same procedure which is just the loops but reducing your circuit would also both of them and compare them would also work so anyways i hope that this video was useful um we're trying to um you know reach as many people as possible so if you thought that this content was useful please leave a like it really helps promote our channel with the you know however YouTube decides to promote these videos. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments. We do read and answer the comments. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video.